We're going to start with the basics of Boris Continuum Complete. They've been broken into a number of different categories to help to organize the effects out. Now, sometimes when you're dealing with this number of filters, it actually can be quite tricky to find the effect that you want immediately. And that's why with BCC, you have the effects browser. And the effects browser either comes as a standalone filter, which lets us take a look through all the different filters that we have available to us, and any of the hundreds of save presets that come as part of the BCC package. And if we take a look over at uh, Film Process, for example, we can select one of our presets, and over in the viewer, we can hit play to see how it's going to look on the clip that we have selected. And if we don't want that particular effect, well, all we do is we come down, find another filter that we're after, and choose that one instead. Now with the standalone effects browser, you can't apply these presets here. So we'll just hit close. But now it's just a simple case of finding that filter using that. And we can either select our presets using the preset drop down menu here, or again, go to the effects browser and we'll see only the presets for that particular filter. And here I can hit apply and then play that back in real time. If you're using the AVX versions of Boris Continuum Complete, you'll see that there's a few different versions of these filters. With many of the filters, we have a green dot version. And you see we've got uh, a green dot BCC film glow. And the green dot means that it will be playing back in real time. We also have other filters that don't have the green dot, for example, BCC match grain. And these are filters that need access to the footage at alternate times in the current frame. For example, match grain needs an alternate source to be able to match the grain from and apply it to our footage. And there's other versions of filters that have MT after their name. And this stands for motion tracking. So we have a look at BCC Film Glow and take a look at our effect editor down here. You see, we've got quite a few controls that we can start to play around with. Now, if I replace that with the Film Glow MT, you'll see we have the same controls. Plus, we can use the BCC built in motion tracker. So maybe if we wanted to limit that effect to a certain area of the footage, we can motion track a mask through there. And these will show on your timeline as blue dots, non real time filters. So if you don't need the motion tracking elements, I'd recommend using the real time versions of those filters wherever possible. I'm just going to glow this out quite a lot because I want to have a look now at the general controls here. Now these are controls that are available in all of the filters. We have abilities to turn on things like safe levels. So instead of using full color range, we're using a broadcast safe color range for our levels. Now, if we click under preferences in the general controls here, we get up another little window that lets us change things globally. So anytime that I change these preferences, it's going to change the preferences for all of our BCC filters. So here we can turn on and off GPU processing for our filters. And we can also turn on 4K buffers if we're working with footage over HD resolution. And we have our safe levels default set to on. But we also have a safe level global override. So that means we can force safe levels on across all of the filters, whether we have it selected in the individual filters or not. So the force on is actually really useful for ensuring that all of your filters will be processed out within the broadcast safe color levels there. Another really useful general feature found across the BCC filters is the compare controls here. So if I open up the compare and set this to compare side by side, what we can do is we can see our unaffected and our affected filters played side by side here. Or if I turn this to compare, I can compare this using a wipe so I can see just how far I've taken our footage. And finally, for the general controls, we have our view parameters drop down here. So we can take a look at either all the parameters, which depending on the filter can be quite a long list going down, or we can start to have a look at the ones we've edited. So we're limiting the number of controls we actually have to look at, or we can go into see the only ones we've animated. And those are the basic general controls for Boris Continuum Complete, which you'll find contained in every one of the filters.